Welcome, everybody. I'm Ron, and you're listening to the Northern Electric Vehicle Experience. Thank you for tuning in, and let's get on with the show. Up to this point, we've been uh, sort of reviewing what we review. We reviewed the Volkswagen ID4. We looked at some of the state of electric vehicle charging today, and we are now going to look at the Hyundai Ionic 5, which is along with the ID4, probably one of the most compelling uh, new EV entrants uh, in the uh, space in 2021. At least I'm uh, I'm intrigued with the vehicle. Hyundai and uh, Kia have come a long way on EVs. Um, they've come a long way as companies. They were, oh, I remember in the 80s when they were first coming out with the Pony and that was an awful vehicle. But they came into the market, they provided a cheap vehicle, and and it did its job. It was cheap. And in the Canadian market, well, North America, in the in the states and provinces that get winter, um, I remember that pony just got obliterated by salt. I don't know what it is, but every manufacturer coming into the North American market seems to be surprised by road salt. Um, I know most other places in the world don't do that. And in fact, in Canada anyways, uh, road salt is quickly becoming a thing of the past or at the very least limited to major highway uh, use only. It's um, it's definitely becoming more of a problem. It's a, Well, it's becoming very expensive, but it is also becoming environmentally a problem. Whether you're a tree hugger or not, it doesn't really matter. We all drink water, and I've recently become aware that our water table is becoming heavily inundated with road salt. And in provinces like Ontario and Quebec, where they've used road salt for a long time, even on residential streets, uh, the municipality's water testing has, has quickly uh, discovered that, well, I guess not that quickly, but they've discovered that the salination level of their groundwaters uh, is becoming problematic, shall we say. Um, and the municipalities have been moving away from road salt and into sand. Um, sand is, a me is messier. It's a pain to work with. Uh, it leaves a lot of residue behind that you have to clean up, but it doesn't salinate your water table. And when you're looking at it from a municipal point of view, they start saying, hmm, do we keep using road salt and having little problems with it, um, except for the whole salinating the water supply thing? Um, or do we stop using, or do we invest in uh, desalination plants for the municipal water plant, uh, water supply? Cost-wise, it's much cheaper to not use salt. Uh, sand is cheaper to use. More cleanup is required. It's easier on vehicles. It's easier on roads. It's easier on sidewalks and buildings. And generally speaking, other than the fact that you have to sweep it up in the spring, it's a lot easier on everything. So most municipalities are now moving towards sand use or brined sand. Um, anyways, that's a little tidbit of non-EV related stuff to know today. Um, with regards to the Hyundai Ioniq 5, it is compelling to me because A, it looks pretty hot. That's an interesting looking car. It's kind of angular. Some people are going to love it. Some people are going to hate that thing. Um, I'm mixed. Um, I'm, it's growing on me. I like it. It's kind of angular and edgy. Um, it's, it's definitely unique and it's interesting and it kind of fits the Hyundai brand. Um, but that's the looks, um, physically it's going to compete with, uh, vehicles like the RAV4, the Honda CRV, Tiguan, that kind of vehicle, maybe the Tucson. Um, sort of the small SUV or CUV that they're often referred to or as a crossover, kind of a beefier crossover. Um, that's the segment it's in. It's a fairly large vehicle. It's got a long wheelbase. It stands quite tall. 
It's quite roomy inside. It is not an inexpensive vehicle. It is not um, Hyundai cheap. It is Hyundai's high quality and uh, high quality of production and decent styling and good trim and appointments. Um, it comes or will come. It is currently not available in Canada, and I think it is not really available in the U.S. yet, but it's about to be. It is literally uh, just about to be uh, released in the U.S. and Canada. It comes in three trim levels, and I'll read it from the from the U.S. website because the Canadian website is remarkably uh, um, useless on this particular front. Uh, it comes in three trims, the lowest trim being the limited uh, edition, and it has premium remote parking assist, 20-inch alloy wheels, surround view monitor, blind spot monitor, vision, panoramic sunroof, two-way onboard charger. That's interesting. We'll talk a little bit more about that after and a bunch of other stuff. Now, the SEL trim uh, comes with a lot of different things. It comes with that, but it also has full LED headlights. It's got leatherette seating services. It's got highway driving assist, hands-free smart lift gate with auto open, uh, Hyundai digital key and ambient interior lighting. And the SE edition, now this one, that's compelling. It's neat. It's interesting. It has ultra-fast charging, and we're going to come back to that. Uh, it's got 19-inch uh, aero alloy wheels, 12.3-inch digital instrument cluster, 12.3-inch touchscreen display with navigation, blue link connected car system, heated front seats. Not sure why the heated front seats aren't all the way through it, but... Whatever, it is a compelling, interesting, exciting vehicle. Let's talk a bit about some of the details of the Ionic 5. Um, it has some of the, the, the nice features. You'd like it a bit more of an upscaled um, vehicle. It's got an automatic seat memory. It's got an interesting thing it does with the center console. It will move... Um, right out of the way it'll move all the way to the back of the vehicle it has of course the the flat full floor of any purpose-built uh, ev it has a an interesting feature a uh, vehicle to load uh, meaning you can use your vehicle to power your campsite to power your your uh I don't know, maybe your refrigerator and a power outage, I, whatever you want to do with it. Um, it has the capability uh, to provide power to things outside the vehicle, which is a really interesting feature. Um, it has a, a good heads-up display system. It is based on the uh, Hyundai eGMP platform. That's the global mobility platform it's a purpose-built platform for evs um, it has an amazing uh, charging curve particularly in the in the top trim it has the ultra fast high speed charging so uh, it's a bit more expensive quite a bit more expensive uh, but it may well be worth it um, it's got some neat extra features um, in that top trim, the ultra fast charging, you can get to 80% in 18 minutes. This is a vehicle that has in excess of 450 kilometers of range. It's in it's approaching 500 kilometers of range. Um, to get to 18%, sorry, 80% in 18 minutes is stunning. Uh, that translates to about 100 kilometers in five minutes. Uh, with my Chevy Bolt, I just did a bit of a test on it to see where it's at. It is supposed to be able to charge at 80 kilo, up to 80 kilowatts. Not a chance. At least I've never seen it. Um, if on a good day, it'll get to 35 kilowatts charging, and that's from virtually dead empty. So it's either the software my car whatever but it is not getting to any 80 percent uh 
or, or 80 kilowatts charging speed and that curve probably ramps down quite quickly with the ionic 5 some of the test drives i've uh, seen uh it has a, a really good charging curve it goes up quickly it stays up for most of the time till it gets to 80 percent uh, and that's how it gets uh you know to 80 percent in 18 minutes it is a well designed fast charging vehicle that is definitely competitive with the Teslas. Um, now, of course, Tesla has a dedicated supercharger network that is capable of satisfying the Tesla vehicle. Um, less so for the Ionic 5. It has to uh, you know, work with the public charging networks, Petro Canada, uh, Electrify America, Electrify Canada, uh, IV and uh, Flow, Add Energy, that kind of thing. Um, but you're starting to see more of the 150 plus uh, chargers. And, and as I've spoken of before, I want to see more chargers in the 100 to 150 kilowatt range. Uh, that's a very usable range. Most vehicles, they're not going to take advantage of the 350 kilowatts that are some are out there. And if they do, it's not for the entire time. It is, you know, a very small portion of the charge, and then it will ramp down to, you know, 200, 150, that kind of range, um, which is still an amazing charging speed. Um, and from everything I've heard, the Ionic 5's um, top edition charging speed is excellent, but also the, the regular editions are quite good. In Canada, the Ionic 5 ex is expected to start with the base edition at $44,999. That will get it the $5,000 federal rebate and qualify all of the versions of the Ionic for that. Um, I don't have pricing for the other, other models, but hopefully we'll get that soon in uh, the U.S., um, the pricing on the Ionic 5 is hmm, looking at in that range. They also don't have the different trims available. Uh, so hmm, can't help you with that one too much. We are uh, hopefully going to get some uh, new vehicles into dealer lots and I can take some out for test drives and give you some in-person reviews um, with a bit of a northern bent to see how these cars perform in winter driving conditions. Um, anyone can review uh, dry, dry roads, warm temperatures, Mediterranean sun, uh, Southern California, all that makes for much more effective EVs. Uh, we need to know how these things operate in the climate that we live in here in Canada, Northern United States, Northern Europe, and any other Northern climate. So I will endeavor to get that for you. Um, as they come into, uh, come into dealers, I will try to get them, uh, to review them. What else do we have on the go? Uh, still looking for some letters from all of you. Uh, I'd like to hear what you have to say, both about uh, this particular uh, vehicle, some of the other things I've reviewed, and what do you want me to review? What do you want me to talk about? What are your problems and concerns and issues? Um, I was meeting with some clients the other day, um, and they had some interesting questions about EVs. They were an elderly couple. They bought themselves a Hyundai Kona EV. They didn't know what the winter, what the winter charging situation would be like, what the what the loss of power would be like. They had a belief that they would only have 20% of their power for the winter and that it would be a really arduous thing, but they were going to do it any, anyways, because they thought it was the right thing to do. <laughs> but um Little did they know that uh, what they actually had heard was that you can lose as much as 20% of your range, not that you would only have 20% left. So they were very happy to hear that. Um, and I said, with that particular vehicle, 
except for on the absolute coldest days, the polar vortexes and stuff, um, they're not going to lose that kind of range. So please uh, send me your messages. Uh, let me know what you want to know about. I can answer a lot. If I don't know the answer, I know a lot of people that will know the answer. So that is the show for this week. Y'all have a great week. And uh, please, if you if you've thought about looking into EVs, if you're in the market for buying an electric car, please do. You will never regret it.